the ERG chairman, Marc Francois, said, I'd like to thank I'd like to thank the Star Chamber, chaired by Sir Bill Cash MP and ably supported by Martin Howe KC, Barnabas Reynolds and David Jones MP for their diligent and thorough examination of the legal implications of the Windsor framework. The Star Chamber's principal findings are that EU law will still be supreme in Northern Ireland, the rights of its people under the 1800 Act of Union are not restored, the Green Lane is not really a Green Lane at all, the Stormont break is practically useless, and the framework itself has no exit other than through a highly complex legal process. That is a very brief summary of the findings of the Star Chamber. You should hopefully all have a copy of the report with a press release and there's a nice diagram on the back that shows you how the Stormont break, in theory at least, is meant to work. I hope that's a, a quick summary. I can take four or five quick questions. So, sorry, let's, uh, let's start here. Uh, Andy Bell, five news. Yeah. Do you accept that as a result of this, if the government were to follow your proposals, there would be a hard border in Northern Ireland. That is a logical conclusion of rejecting what you have now. No, I, I don't accept that at all. Uh, and, and the reasons why that is not correct are set out in the report, but I would encourage you to read it. So who's next? Yes. Tom. Will you be voting against the proposals, therefore, and how many ERG colleagues of yours do you expect will follow suit? Right. On that, the DUP have made their position very plain. They're going to vote against. We, to some degree, have been critical of the government for not allowing people enough time to digest everything. So, for instance, the statutory instrument and the explanatory notes only came out yesterday. So we don't want to be hoist by our own petard. So we've just made this public now. It is available on the internet and the email address at Lawyers for Britain is on your press release. If you could promulgate that, we would be grateful so that other members of Parliament can read this. This is by no means just for the ERG. We'd like all members of Parliament, ideally, to read this before the vote tomorrow so they know exactly what they're voting on. And we'd like members of the public and particularly people in Northern Ireland to have an opportunity to read this report so that they understand what is at stake. Because we need to allow people time to digest this, the ERG will meeting, be meeting again tomorrow in this room at the same time once people have had an opportunity to digest all this documentation and some of it is pretty heavy legalese but I've tried to summarise it for you we as a group will discuss what attitude if any to take and we'll be having that meeting just before PMSQs and uh, we're meeting at half past ten and then immediately before the vote so that is when we as a group will decide what we're going to do when to be fair Tom people have had a chance to plough through some fairly complex documentation. So can we just take from that that you may actually, you may actually abstain, you may not abstain. Well, the, the group hasn't taken the decision yet and ultimately, this has always been our way, it will be down to every individual colleague in the group. So I'm not going to preempt that decision for all the reasons I've just given you. But now, can I just make a point about the Stormont, the so-called Stormont break? You've got a diagram on the back. Let me see if I can summarise this for you very quickly. One, it only applies if Stormont is up and running. So if, for instance, Sinn Féin, for any reason, were to, just, were to collapse the Assembly, the break would no longer apply. Secondly, it's very limited in its scope. It applies to goods, but not to state aid, VAT, the majority of the customs code, so-called trade defence measures and the electricity market. So it's only applicable in narrow circumstances. Three, the EU law being proposed against which the break could be theoretically deployed has to have a significant impact on everyday life in Northern Ireland in a way which is liable to persist. 
also it can only be exercised in exceptional circumstances. But the Secretary of State for Northern Ireland can decide not to accept the break being used in exceptional circumstances. It has to be discussed in the UK-EU Joint Committee as a matter of urgency where the UK can decide not to implement the break. Even if they do decide to implement the break via the Joint Committee, the EU can then still object to that and the matter is then referred to arbitration where the UK could lose. So that is clearly not a veto. A veto means you want to do something and I can stop you. This is not a veto, which is how it has been characterised for the past three weeks. Even if after all of that, you win at arbitration, and there's no guarantee you will, the EU can then implement remedial measures, i.e. they can retaliate. And then lastly, after all of that, if you've had the temerity to pull the brake, the UK, via the Joint Committee, then has to produce the results of an urgent review as to why they felt the brake had to be used in the first place. That is the Stormont break. Do you think That's you've been actually. Misled? Sorry? Do you think you've been misled? I'm going to leave that to others to judge, but I want people to read this document which explains all of this in detail. But that is why, having explained it to you, I hope having walked you through it, and thank you for your patience. How many DRG Just a second, and thank you for your patience. Because that is why we have said that the break is practically useless. So will you vote against it? Let's have, wait till we've got our meeting tomorrow. But given, 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 given all you said, is there any way you could not vote against it? Let's wait till what happens tomorrow. Thank you very much indeed for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. It's all, I hope the press release helps you. It's all on the internet. Please promulgate it as widely as you can. Thank you very much. Okay.